Again, uh, so, uh, my name is Anil Manke. I'm co-founder and chief development officer for Bain Chip Inc. Um, let me talk about, uh, somebody asked me, how do you do it? So look at the picture that you have. Uh, I talked about NPU. And this NPU, each of the NPU has 100 kilobytes of memory that stores the weights and the parameters and activation and some internal buffers. And if you look at the picture, this actually shows neurons and synapses. So we actually emulate in digital is a integrated fire neuron. It, each of the uh, uh, NPU has eight uh, compute engine, and it, it can take the input uh, events coming in, process them, and communicate over the mesh network. Four of those NPUs become a node, so they can communicate at one layer, and the higher level, uh, uh, the, the node can communicate with each other. And we can, this is actually a scalable design. Depending on the uh, size of the network that you want to run on an IP, you can decide to license a four node or eight node or 16 node. The chip that we have built today is 20 node IP, uh, chip that we will show you. But this is, uh, and, and this, uh, the two uh, blue blocks that you see here, the one, one of the uh, hardware design is actually takes the frames of data and convert that into events. Similarly, this is the IP that sits on the, uh, on a bus that can really uh, self-sufficient IP that can take uh, input frames or whatever data is coming in, process it, programs a neural network, a runtime software will actually do that and generate the same inference, whether it was coming from a CNN, whatever was running on an NVIDIA GPU, you can take the network, map it down, and actually might as, you might be successfully fitting into the IoT device. So, <clears throat> And all the functions that are done in this device are uh, all uh, the fun standard function that you, you need to do. Uh, 2D convolution layers, uh, max pooling, um, global average pooling, uh, fully connected layer, all of those uh, things that you normally see in a CNN uh, can be seen, uh, seen here. It can be computed here. Somebody asked me about software, uh, what software do we have? Because uh, the uh, neuromorphic things are very difficult to program. Yes, a lot of people have given up trying to program the correlates for the IBM 2 North, and uh, Intel has done slightly better. But what we do is we said, nobody's going to program our chip and understand this. So we actually adapted the industry standard TensorFlow Keras tools. Uh, and the way you will use those tools, you'll take a standard uh, CNN that has been uh, trained in the cloud. You take that thing and uh, figure out first how, what are the functions that are supported today in our Akira IP and map it to our, our functions and then retrain them and uh, uh, save it in the sense of Keras itself. There's another step that you need to do because you want to do inference at a four bit, you can do a, something called quantization of a training in TensorFlow and go down to one, two, or four bit. And you can decide to do that at every layer because depending on the accuracy, adopt you are comfortable with with your data set you you do a quantization of a training so now you have a tensorflow keras cnn that has been mapped to a four bit computation compared with all the hardware construct that akira supports today we can't do lstm till we actually have memory in our network but that's okay you can do some of those parts on on the host cpu if you want but once that network is done you save it in a tensorflow keras format you have done nothing yet you don't know where where the network is going now you take it to our Akira chip simulator. You can run that network that was saved. If the chip simulator will interpret it, decide how many NPUs you need, how per layer, what the performance will be, what the power could be. So before even going to the chip, you can take multiple networks that you want to run on your IoT device, analyze them through this flow, and then uh, the our simulator will tell you X number of uh, NPUs are required for each of them. You can decide how many NPUs are required. And then uh, the same software after the simulator will act, uh, there's a runtime equivalent to that, that will actually configure the neural processing unit, load all the weights, everything else, and then run the inference and give results back. So it's completely, uh, now this software tool that we have developed is actually again similar to Google TensorFlow Keras, is available for free. Everybody can download it from our um, doc.venchipping.com. And uh, you, there are a lot of multiple examples that we have already taken it through this, all the popular network, MobileNet V1, SSD, that typically that's what you will normally do. And those are available. And we actually also support people uh, uh, converting those, uh, uh, if there are some uh, support services required, we actually help you uh, map them to Akida uh, hardware. 
So let's talk about Akira based products. Here's the first product that we talk about, Akira AKD 1000, uh, that has 20 nodes. Now the 20 nodes means uh, it has 20, uh, four NPUs in each node, so, uh, and it takes about eight megabytes of memory. And this is actually implemented in TSMC 20 and nanometer chip. Now you want to bring uh, the data from outside into the chip to run the neural networks. So we have two interfaces, PCIe or USB coming into, of course, I2S for getting audio samples, I2C for some taking some other sensor data. Uh, now uh, we, of course, uh, what we talked about, the pixel to spike converter or genetic data to spike converter. Of course, it has all the power management in this chip. And suppose you have a network that doesn't fit on, uh, on 20 nodes and it is larger network, you can either uh, use a chip to chip communication uh, interface that we have so you can connect multiple chips to transfer events from uh, some uh, nodes in, in this chip to the second chip. And of course, uh, eight megabytes of memory may not be sufficient for storing of your weights. So you could actually use external LPDDR for storing external weights and uh, the, uh, um, the Akira IP will bring those in, process them and store the results back. So it's a complete uh, and a neural network SOC along with a ARM, ARM M4 processor. The ARM M4 processor is used only for configuring the neural network, managing all the interfaces. And if you could actually run three or four different independent networks on the neural network fabric, like audio, pressure, sensor, experimental data, and then do sensor fusion on the ARM M4. So we actually are compatible with the standard ecosystem, just like we've adopted Google TensorFlow Keras. Here we are actually working with uh, whatever ARM has chosen M4 to be the uh, processor of choice for age IoT device. So we are compatible with that. Uh, so uh, you can do sensor fusion and other applications on the ARM, but we don't really use ARM for running the network. It's more for management and the runtime for uh, uh, that will run here. So Neil, the, yeah? there's some missing stats on here. So when we see high-speed serial connection of the 32 devices, what is that speed and yes. does it? So it's a PCIe 2.1 uh, uh, interface, actually, a five, giga, uh, five gigabit uh, uh, per second uh, interface, two channels. Uh, and the PCIe 2.1 also here, yeah, USB 3.0 is again five gigabits. You can bring in the data, it's just for uh, packet transmission, yeah. Here is the actual chip that is actually in our lab for the last two months. Uh, is, this is a PCIe plugin card. Uh, you see one chip there, we can actually testing the chip-to-chip -chip communication on the other two sockets that you see. The M.2 PCIe card uh, that you see here, this is the chip 15 by 15 flip chip VGA chip, uh, plugged into a motherboard uh, uh, on the right side. So the chip exists and I'll show you uh, the actual application, the neural network that I'm talking about, running on this chip in our demo section. So what, why do we do all these things and where, where is the best advantage of neuromorphic computation AGI device? So think about a robot. So Akira actually enables all the efficient processing, low power processing at the edge, next to the sensor um, inference for visual, like image sensor coming from a camera for object classification, object detection, all the things that you will do normally auditory input data from a microphone. You can do uh, keyword spotting, you can listen to the hum, you can listen to noise, you can look, listen to audio signature. You can actually do olfactory application, like there's an Eno sensor, I'll show you the network that we designed for that. It can really smell different industrial gases, or even COVID, uh, uh, I'll show you some example of that. Uh, gustatory uh, uh, sense, right, uh, E-Tang, there's, uh, there's a sensor that actually can distinguish between different tests, we can take the data, analyze it, and differentiate between the different tests. Or even somatosensory tactile feedback, like vibration analysis or accelerated data coming from uh, different sensors. So if you just think about, uh, if you implant a brain chip into a robot, it can now see, it can hear, it can smell, it can test, it can feel. All the sensors that a human being can do and because of uh, and, and this, it can do it very efficiently, very low power, and it can be next to the sensor. And there are hundreds of applications that you can realize because how uh, low power, small, it can be uh, in, uh, and uh, making the all of these sensors smart. 
you talked about the the chip being used for sensor metallities. Um, uh, just a curiosity question: If you are to retrofit the existing sensors to use your chips, um, how easy or difficult a job that is? Yeah. So the chip that we have, you can actually bring in all the data, analyze it, and of course, some of these uh, uh, sensor modularities don't need a twenty-node solution. So either you have a small die design, or you integrate it into the sensor itself. You can you can put it in, in a camera in a camera CMOS image sensor chip next to it. You can actually have a, uh, let's say you want to just do person detection. You can have a small network that can look at each frame and only give, send those frames where there's a person and all the other frames don't have to be sent. So you can, uh, the, uh, the expectation is, while our chip may, may be a little bit too weak for some of the small sensor data, you can, the, our objective is to really, uh, 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 enable those networks and actually integrate it into the sensor and all of the sensor can be smart. You don't need to have a camera sending frames to be analyzed or just looking at some objects. You can just, the camera itself can be smart enough that it can look at every frame and decide to send only those frames that is object of interest. So you think about the, uh, the internet bandwidth you're saving, the power you're saving, and then you're making the, all of this sensor data. First step, first step is to make the sensor smart. And then a second level analysis can do further identification of a person, right? You could actually say, there's a person in the frame, go figure out who the person is. And that can be some additional hardware that can wake up and just say, it's, it's you, your face, it's not a face. Yeah, so a related question on that would be, if uh, if I were to use this uh, chips at the edge locations, are, are your chips trainable or reprogrammable like FPGAs or are they all fixed? No, so this is actually ASIC. Uh, they are not programmable, but you actually select number of nodes that are once embedded into that. But the pro the network is programmable, but not the why uh, because but the wiring is programmable because it's a mesh network. So you you are actually programming the connectivity of the NPUs, but it's not like a PGA that you can just change something. We don't really need to that. But this you could almost call this field programmable neural processor because. The neural processing that you're trying to do, are you programming in the field, but not in the FPGAs? So that leads me to another question. Um, a lot of these solutions require on, ongoing training, and I, and I realize that uh, the neural, the spiking neural net solution that's on the chip could be modified with additional data over time. But um, how do you how do you provide that sort of information back to some sort of central repository where it would be, you know, let's say, you know, I want, I've got these uh, thousand robots in the field doing all these things and each one is being trained in its individual environment. But at some point I want to try to incorporate all that individual training back into, you know, a central uh, neural network that I can then download to all these other devices. All very, these devices very, good, again. very good question. So uh, when we started a company, in 2008, actually, our first patent was how to do competition neuromorphic. And the second patent in 2013 was, once I learned something, how to make it a library. So let me give you an example. Yes, so we can have an IoT device. And let's say in a factory floor, you're actually training, uh, you can actually, using on-chip training, you actually have uh, classified 10 different objects. If you add a couple more objects to that, you can save all the neuromorphic weights, the whole network configuration, and send it back. And then now a central server can download into all of the devices that are there. So you can, uh, so once you have trained something uh, similar to, so we can save those uh, weights and libraries and all that. And now you can deploy 2000 objects in the different field. And so learning from one factory floor can be when you modified something, it can be deployed at other ones, and then it can continue learning also. 